Hi everyone. Uh, this is going to be a quick video where I will give this. I will give a bit of an example that demonstrates what Hansel's lemma is supposed to look like, and then I will give the statement of Hansel's lemma. Um, this is for Olympiad purposes, so it's focused specifically on numbers modulo p, and I'm not going to give the statement in the full generality for like a generic number field or with like a place or whatever. So. Um, let me start with the following. We're going to look at the polynomial f of x equals x cubed plus 17. And we're going to be interested in this polynomial modulo 5. So f of x just looks like this. And modulo 5, uh, the polynomial f has a root at x equals 2. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at what the value of f is um, modulo 25 at this root. So when I look at modulo 25, this x equals 2 root uh, sort of lifts into five different roots. You're interested in f of 2, f of 7, f of 12, f of 17, and f of 22. This is quite zoomed in. I don't need to be that far zoomed in. Okay, so let's compute what happens when I look at this mod 25. So this number is going to be equal to 0, mod 25. And then the number after it's 7 cubed is 343 plus 17 is 360, so this is 10 mod 25. Um, then if I look at 12, uh, 12 cubed is 1728, plus 17 is 1745, which is 20 mod 25. I already have a typo, apparently I misspelled polynomial, so let me fix that. And f of 17, 17 cubed is, oh, geez, uh, 4913, I hope. Uh, plus 17, take mod 25, I get 5. And 22, I'm not even sure I can do. Let's see, 44... 968, 10, 6, 15. So I already knew all these numbers were going to be divisible by 5 because like 2 is a root mod 5. So when I plug in numbers that are 2 mod 5, I will always get things divisible by 5. Um, but when I look at these numbers, they have this very nice property um, where they are actually an arithmetic progression. It's like 0, 10, 25, 15. And in particular, what this means is that I get every root or every multiple of 5 exactly once. Like 0, 5, 10, 15, 25. Or sorry, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Um, modulo 25. So this is pretty, this is what I'll call like good behavior. Um, what happens is that I get each of the possible residues, modulo 25. That's a little by five exactly once, and in fact, they're always in arithmetic progression. So, why is that happening? Well, we can dig a little into it. Uh, what's going on? Well, let's just say, in general, f f of x plus p minus f of x. I'll evaluate it for this specific polynomial, um, but the same calculation will just hold in general. The seventeens cancel out, and I will get something like three x squared times p plus 3x times p squared, plus p cubed. And if I only care about things modulo p squared, this stuff all goes away. So I only care about the terms that have a single p here. And this is some number. And this number is always a certain thing. Well, for our special case for x is always uh, 2 mod 5, this will always be 12 mod 5. And more generally, what will always happen is uh, f of x, f of x plus p, and so on. This thing, this is always an arithmetic progression modulo p squared. So if x is a root, then f of x plus p, f of x plus 2p, and so on, because of this calculation, um, you get like p times a thing that has a fixed value of modulo p. So, yeah, always a p. 
And so now you might be like, oh, this is really great. Um, this might mean that, you know, the theorem that we hope is true is that uh, if f has a root modulo p, then because of the arithmetic progression, we might think that this means um, then f achieves every multiple of p modulo p squared. That would be like what's the, you know, in an ideal world, this might be true. Um, unfortunately, this is not true. And to give a counter example, I'm going to look at the polynomial uh, g of x equals x cubed plus 3x plus 17. So this polynomial is a little different. And what happens is when I compute g at, so g still has a root at, uh, sorry, let me not use 17. Uh, I wanted to have a root at 2. So x cubed plus 3x plus 1, when I compute this, um, this is 15, g of 7 is 15 mod 25. g of 12 is 15 mod 25, and so on. So they're actually all 15. So it is an, still an arithmetic progression. Uh, however, I mean, it's an arithmetic progression with common difference zero. So you, the theorem does not hold for this case. So the upshot of this is that um, if I have a root mod p, then when I look at it modulo p squared, it will always be an arithmetic progression, but it could be the case that the constant dif the common difference is zero, which is sad. You know, this is a little bad. We would want it to hit every number exactly once, but here it's stabilized at a certain number over and over. So the question is, um, I'll get to the higher powers in a moment. So the question is, how can I tell these apart? Like, how do I know whether I'm in a case where the common difference is non-zero versus when the common difference is zero? And the answer is that if you look at this quantity, it's really big hint. This quantity might look at like a quantity that you're very familiar with. And it turns out that this is essentially, if you do the calculation, you will find that this green bit is actually f prime. It is the derivative of f. You can check this for polynomials f. So the way to complete the statement is to say, if f has a root r modulo p, then f achieves every multiple modulo p squared under the additional condition that the derivative is not equal to 0 modulo p. So this is the condition that makes that common difference non-zero, because it turns out the common difference is exactly given by p times this number. Okay, so that is that. Um, so someone was asking in the chat about, well, what about higher powers? And it turns out you can do the same exact same calculation where if I take this 2, I can replace it with k for any k at least 2. And what happens is if I know that it's equally distributed mod p squared, then instead of f of x plus p, I look at f of x plus p squared and repeat the proof, and it'll do the exact same thing. So this result is called Hensel's lemma. It is basically telling you that if you have a root modulo p, then by looking at the derivative, you can tell how that root behaves when I look modulo p squared, p cubed, p to the 4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. OK. And that concludes the statement of Hensel's lemma um, for Olympia purposes. Again, when you look on Wikipedia, you'll find a version that is stated much more generally for algebraic number theory. But um, this is the statement here. OK. I should duck slightly out of the way so that I'm not covering the statement. Good reason to slouch a bit more. <laughs> so that concludes this short Evan Explains video. Uh, thanks for tuning in.